Hi there folks, welcome back to another video. This is Don at Affordable Desert Living. Uh, you can see there's snow up on the Huachucas and uh, it's just really pretty today. So even though we've now entered into our winter months, this is Arizona, so the sun is still fairly powerful. And what that means is we could get up to, oh wow, uh, probably in the high 60s today. What does that mean for me? Time to clean up, get a shower. So some of you have been watching my channel for a long time might remember that originally this is how I used to take showers. I used to uh, take this black camp shower bag and hang it up here in uh, this area here. I used to have a 2x4 propped up here where I could hang this bag from. Not the best location, but I made it work. So naturally the first thing I need to do for the uh, camp shower here is to fill it up with water. So normally during the months that it's not really cold, like in the winter, I can just take this hose, which already would have hot water in it, just being heated by the sun laying out here in the yard, and put this in the shower bag and then fill it up from there and then place it out in the sun and for a couple hours and it'll be good and warm. But this is winter so I'm going to have to heat things the old-fashioned way. So the good thing is we got our induction cooktop here, put the cover on, put it on high and let it do its thing. Of course then you take the hot water and just uh, pour it into the spout here <clears throat> and you got to be really careful because you can singe your fingers really easy pouring this water in here. Not the best method. Okay, one down, now I gotta do another one. Cause this holds five gallons and I like to have about three gallons or so to shower in. The great shower adventure continues with pot number two. All right, now that we got our shower water already, let's get down to business and try to get clean. Okay, to put the shower bag in place, uh, I hung up a combination of bungee cords and a quick clamp that I can use to put the bag up high. There. Next I use this little kiddie pool I got free at the Bisbee thrift shop. And this is a heat shield for a car windshield and so it's kind of thin and soft so I just put that in the bottom. So I wasn't as careful as I could have been one day with my quick clamp hanging device. So you can imagine with the sharp end what happened. Yeah, I poked a hole in it. Not good. Well how cool is this? UPS came, <coughs> banged on my door and then I came out and there was this big old box here. So I ordered this only a couple days ago, so it came really quickly. <clears throat> so this is from a company called Julka, and this is called the Julka Hot Tap. So I'm going to have to confess, folks, I've been salivating and drooling over one of these units for, oh goodness, I don't know months anyway. So I just finally decided to order one because honestly I'm too tired of the hijinks I have to go through to get a hot shower in the winter. In the summer it's easy. In the winter I've got to heat the water and go through all kinds of hoops. So let's unbox this guy and see what's inside. Um, to be honest I watched a couple of videos how you set it up but I've never done that before so I hope it's super easy. Oh, okay. Looks like things are color-coded, which is great. Red for hot, blue for cold. 
This looks like the hose that hooks up to a, a propane tank. Oh, that's important. The hose has a propane regulator on it. I wondered if I was going to have to order some D-sized batteries because I knew that batteries were a part of it, but thoughtfully they included them. And of course you got a safety warning just telling you to be careful when you hook up the uh, propane gas cylinder to the unit. Okay, this is for a car a cigarette lighter so you can uh, power, there's a pump in here, power the pump with a uh, car cigarette lighter. All right, and then uh, looks like the main unit itself here. Looks pretty snazzy. Oh, cool, a little stand to uh, put the unit on. I'll assemble that in a minute. Take the plastic off. The shower head, looks like. And another piece here. I don't know what that's for. I'll find out. So it took me a little while to figure out what this device was for. Turns out it's this really cleverly designed magnetic holder for the shower head. I'll show you. You just take the magnetic holder, snap it onto the shower head, So now I've placed the shower head where I want it, so that's up nice and high, so I'll be able to stand under that easily. So at first I thought this uh, little screw here had to be loosened so that then you could uh, turn the shower head to the position you wanted it. Not really. The shower head, just as it is, is designed to rotate any way you want and aim it for you exactly how you want. So let's see if we can get this guy all together. So these are the items that I found in the bottom of the box here. There's a, uh, a blue or cold water uh, hose and uh, a red one. Comes with these attachments as well. And uh, this is the shower head. I think it just snaps on. Yep. Like the sound of the snap. And this is just to protect it, like if you threw it in a stream, so it kind of keeps it from just basically laying on the bottom of the stream or the bottom of the lake bed. And I think it just plugs in like so. Yep, nice click. I like the sound of clicks. We got this pump for our water source. Check this out. They've got these crazy universal attachments that just clip on. Hear the click? It's on. And the other end, which goes in the water, is this hose here. It has to hook into the pump, of course. Same thing. Listen for the click. Hear that? Just like that. So, folks, this is clearly one of those, I should have read the instructions things. Um, all I wanted to do was put some batteries in the unit and I saw four screws holding a container. I thought you had to unscrew the container to put the batteries in. Uh, no, you don't. All you got to do is push and release. And this compartment for the batteries comes out like so. So now that I got the battery compartment back in place where it never should have been removed, um, putting the D cell batteries in, and that just fits right in, and you push, and it stays in place like that. So my understanding, the batteries run this uh, readout, this digital readout, and uh, I'll learn more about it later on when I hook things up. So let's look at all these items and how they go together. So first thing I'm going to do is take the shower head part and attach that. And that was a little counterintuitive to me because the shower head base is blue and the hose that you attach it to is red. So let's pop it together. Click. 
click, and it's together just like that. And the other end of it just attaches to the main unit here. Same thing, push and click, that easy. There's one. And there's two. Take the little red plugs out completely first on, then hook the tubing on. So on the bottom of the pump, I think you can see it there, there's this directional arrow going that way. That would mean the water is supposed to come from the bucket, through the hose, go that way, and then up into the heating unit. And I'll connect that on. Now that that's attached, that's going to go into the bucket of water. So uh, you, you could hang your unit like so from a tree, but I'm going to use the handy little stand that came with the uh, unit. And I'm just going to hand tighten it. I don't want to strip it. And now I'll do the other one. So I did get the stand put on using these screws that you uh, just tighten by hand. But boy, I'll tell you, this one stripped really easily, although it's still workable. And then this one went on so hard that I couldn't even do it by hand. So constructive comment for Julka would be, um, make these threads a lot sturdier and just that whole screw assembly uh, much sturdier than it is. So the propane hookup is really simple, just like the other Julka attachments, just kind of push and snap on. So now that I'm in my garage slash shower tent, let's uh, start setting up the Julka. So first thing I'm going to do is put this filter on the hose that's used to suck up the water. And that snaps on super easy. You can hear the click. And even though I'm using rainwater for my rainwater harvesting uh, system, which is super clean, I'm going to use it anyway. Put that in my five gallon bucket. And for now, I'll just put the pump here where it's nice and handy, where I can turn it on and off, um, close to where I'm going to shower on a chair. Now I've got the shower head attachment. I'm just going to put it back up where I had the uh, the old uh, camp shower bag. So for safety reasons, I decided to set up the Julka hot tap outside of my tent because there's going to be propane going on and everything. Um, but had I wanted to, I could have hung it up somewhere outside here. But I decided just to put it on a chair on the little stand that I uh, attached earlier. And all of these things, again, are all ready to go, except for the propane with the uh, filter on it. So now I'm going to hook up the propane. And I found this really interesting. Propane threads work just counterintuitive to how you would think they would. So instead of uh, putting things on the normal way, you do just the opposite. But with the hot tap, you just screw things on just as you would think you would. So I want a really nice hot shower, so I'm going to turn the heat all the way on. And to conserve water, I'll just put the water on about a third of the way. So one thing the Julka hot tap needs is power. So I enlisted my little Toyota pickup, aka Corolla, and uh, I'll just plug this into her uh, cigarette lighter. So now that the ignition on my car is turned on, then uh, I'll turn the uh, pump on. Okay, now that we're all set up with the Julka hot tap, I am so looking forward to the shower. So since it seems to me the shower flow is pretty vigorous, I didn't want to run out of water during my shower, so I've got two containers now of water I can use. 
The other thing that's really unique about this unit is when you turn the button on for the shower nozzle, then that activates the propane mechanism and everything fires up with the unit. I'm going to be honest with you, that is the best shower I have ever had on this property. I mean, we're talking, I'm, I'm standing in the shower and it feels just like I'm in a hotel room. The flow rate of the water and the temperature, just perfect. Perfect. Oh, and the other thing, what I really love, I'm able to stand up fully straight with the shower head over top of me because with a camp shower it hangs so low I'm all bent over where sometimes I have to sit in the tub uh, in order to make everything work. Not in this case. I saw YouTube videos about this product and I was like well it looks nice but you know I have to try it out myself. But I can honestly say this thing far exceeds anything I had hoped. That was one nice shower. And I want to say thank you very much to Julka for letting me try this out. This wasn't a paid advertisement for them at all. Uh, the agreement is if they like the video I produced, uh, they'll reimburse me for the cost I paid to uh, own one of these. So let's hope they do. So thanks so much, folks, for joining me here as I shared my experience about showering here on my off-grid property. And also, for those of you who have subscribed, thanks for subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Click the notification bell. That'll let you know when my next video is coming up. And Thank you very much for joining me here, and we'll see you on the next video.